Welcome to Outlaw Edge. So I have this square body Chevy truck here, grinding it down, finding more holes, trying to get the paint off this bed. And there's so many spots that are just hidden with Bondo. But I need to fill this hole right here. And I already patched, put a patch panel in here, built this piece, and then I, I need to build this piece on the back side right here that goes from here up. Get that welded in. This got postponed because we had that car sold, so uh, we had to put this, push this outside and put it in storage for a couple days. But then uh, when I was welding this up, you know, when I ground it down, there was no rust. But as soon as I started welding it up, you can see that there's some rust that popped up right here. So I got to cut all this out now and build another piece and weld that in. Hopefully, I'm gonna chase some more rust. And then this needs to be ground down. There's a weld there. This piece is already done. I built this the other day. And then this piece, I got to hammer and dolly work and whatever and get it all set up the way it needs to go. And I think that's it. So next couple days, I'll have you guys follow me along and we'll get this thing uh, body worked and get in primer and whatever, see what happens. All right, so the next thing I got is I need to weld this piece up so that I can trim it so it matches the other side. And then uh, after that, I'll start forming that piece on the back side. Since it's sheet metal, I'm going about a half inch, throwing a spot weld and then going over to the next side, throwing a spot weld, or I'll go about three quarters of an inch apart and drop a spot weld. And that's just so it doesn't warp it. asking what's, what uh, sheet metal do I use to match these beds or the early style cars like the 80s, 90s right in there. I use 20 gauge sheet metal.
So this is what I did right here. I added a piece here because for some reason, I looked at this, <clears throat> excuse me. I looked at the other side of the bed and I realized that that one over there is cut off also. So I'm gonna do these where they look correct. And then uh, I'll run this line straight through. So, you know, I'll be adding a half inch up to about three quarters of an inch right here. And then I'll cut that off. And then uh, take a hammer and dolly and put that body line in there, this body line right here. And then I got a hammer and dolly on this. And you can see some small dents in here are gonna get knocked out. And then uh, after that, then I'll start uh, making the piece for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece off now and wear safety glasses, don't be a dumbass. So that other side was all jacked up. That one's, you know, I trimmed it, made it look nice. And then what I did is I followed this where it comes in at about like a 20 degree and then it just goes straight across right here. And then this piece, the original one on the other side was actually longer. So when I cut that one, that's what it was. I was, I was wanting them to match. Couldn't remember what the hell it was. I knew there was something screwed up on that other side though. But uh, now they both match underneath the bed. There's a pinhole right there too. Damn, this thing's all rotted out. And then, uh, so that now that these match, I'll start building this piece on the inside right here. And uh, you can see where it stops right here. That's this guy. It stops here and it needs to come all the way up to this and weld to this. And that's kind of a brace. I mean, it's nice and strong. It's really strong, but I think I'm gonna build, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna build this piece first. I'll start getting that all cut out. So there you go, I just cut all the old crappy rust out. And that's this piece here. So now I need to start building this piece. And you say it's gonna be a difficult piece because it rounds, and then plus it has that body line. So I'll have to figure this out. It's not gonna be fun. So the next thing I did is I took a piece of 20 gauge sheet metal and I broke it on the end of the table, so it was just a 90. And then I put it in the stretcher and I stretched this side and you can see the shape that it gave it. And then I test fit that piece in there to see if that was gonna work and it did. This was just a piece of scrap. So then I have this guy and this is already uh, made to shape right here. And, and then I made sure and trim the edges so that it fits in there nice. On this line here, I gotta cut off so that it matches inside that bed and it fits nice in here. <clears throat> so I'll get this piece cut and then uh, after I cut it, I'll, I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, here, let, me, let me shut the camera off and I'll show you what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm gonna fit this piece in here. And like I said, this, you know, this is a no show job. The guy doesn't wanna spend a bunch of money. So this is something where we're blowing the thing together as quick as we can. So I'm gonna do the best I can with what I got and uh, try to keep the hours down on this. So I'll get that um, welded in there, but before I do that, I need to put this, uh, this body line in there. And then what I'll do is when this is sitting in there like this, well anyways, I'll come in here and I'll trim right here. I'll take a magic marker, a Sharpie, 
and I'll trim around that also so that when I weld, I can, you know, flush fit, weld that in there, that piece in there. Holy crap, it's hotter than piss in here today. I'm gonna sweat my ass off. <clears throat> it's like 90 degrees in the shop and then it's like super humid also. It's super hot outside right now, but, but anyways, uh, but you can see the shape that it has, you know, and that matches that radius right there. So I'll get it welded in there and see what happens. So this is a homemade hammer that I made a while back. And what I did is I just ran this hammer right here on this edge where I put that Sharpie mark. And it gave me this shape here. And then I'll just refine it. I'll keep tapping on it until it's nice and smooth and you know, planish it out so it's completely smooth. But this is just a slug, an old piece of metal that I have with a lip on it. And that's all I'm using to shape that piece here. <clears throat> and I put it in here and it fits perfect. And you can see that it's going to match up nice when that's welded in there. And then I have a lot of trimming and whatever to do. But that's, that's what, one of the things what I wanted to show is, you know, you don't have to have a bunch of expensive tools to do this kind of stuff. A lot of... The, most of the stuff is hand shaping as it is. You know, like this piece I made by hand. This piece was completely, pretty much made by hand except for the edge where I rolled it on the, the bead roller on the tipping wheel. And, you know, uh, tip that over 90 degrees. And then, you know, I have a shrinker stretcher, but you know, you don't need a shrinker stretcher. You don't need a tipping wheel. You can do this stuff by hand. I've showed in my past videos where you can shrink and stretch with a hammer and, you know, get these shapes right here. And, uh, you know, you don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars and, you know, tools to do this kind of stuff. But anyways, I'm going to do this as a part one and uh, I'll try to do a part two tomorrow when I'm in here working on it. But I'm going to get something to drink real quick. It's like super hot <clears throat> before I kill over. But I appreciate you guys joining me. Thanks for watching.